Five index funds I'm buying in 2023. Whether you're a complete beginner to the stock market or you're an advanced stock market investor, all five of these have great long-term potential and may fit into your portfolio. I'm gonna go over exactly everything that you need to know and why I'm personally buying. So 2022 was an awful year for the stock market. Everything went down, even index funds, anywhere from 20% to ARK Invest down 70%. However, if you look historically at the decades and decades of the stock market history, you'll see that investing into a diversified, low-cost index fund works out over time. The market always tends to bounce back and this could be another great buying opportunity. So to take advantage of this ongoing discount, we're gonna go into ETF or index fund number one here and that is VOO. VOO is the Vanguard 500 index fund. This is meant to mirror the S&P 500. This is particularly great if you want to get a broad mix of different stocks without having to pick individual stocks. If you pick an individual stock, it could go up a lot, it could also go down a lot. We've seen that with companies like AMC, for example, example down almost 90% from its high and sometimes they do also go to the moon but if you don't want to take unnecessary risk and you want to have a steady growth in your portfolio VOO is a great example of a good index fund for that most of the Vanguard funds out there are also some of the lowest cost ETFs out there the annual fee typically amounts to less than 0.1% so not only are you diversified in terms of numbers here but also all these stocks are in different sectors meaning some of these are technology stocks, some of these are banks, some of these are materials, consumer discretionary, retail companies. You get a whole different mix here. If you just go into one particular area of the market, again, that market could do well or that market could do poorly in a particular period of time. By widely diversifying in different sectors here, again, this lowers your risk. Now for the obvious question, right? Does this index fund make money over time for me? Well, if you look at that past historical return here over the past five years, you'll see that this index fund is still up 40% despite the bear market. So that is still pretty impressive. And at one point, this fund was up about 70% before we had this bear market. And we can also look at the historical performance over the past 10 years as well. And this index fund is up 260%. So you do have a proven track record here when it comes to VOO. And if you're new to investing, by the way, one of the apps that I use is Moomoo. Moomoo has a ton of data built into it and it's easily accessible for you to look into what stocks are in index funds. For example, you can see on the screen here and you can do a whole lot of research into individual stocks as well. Look at balance sheets, financial statements. Be sure to check it out, link in the description. They always have new user promotions and they can give away 15 free stocks. Index fund number two is QQQ, the NASDAQ technology-based index fund. This index fund is primarily made up of technology stocks. You have most of the big tech companies like Apple, Microsoft, Netflix, Amazon, Meta, all of them represented in this in pretty heavily weighted. I like this one a lot because tech stocks, in my opinion, are still the future. Obviously, everything that's going on with innovation is tech based. And we do have a lot of companies in there that are growing much quicker than the average stock. Some of them are growing 10 to 20% in revenues and many of these are very much at scale. With that growth though, the most of these stocks are more volatile. They have bigger peaks to troughs, but this is still up 69% over the past five years, beating the performance of VOO. And if you look at the all-time chart on the QQQ, this is up 430%. The triple Qs have an expense ratio of about 0.2 here, so slightly higher, but still generally a very low cost index fund. Next one up here, number three is JEPI, the JP Morgan Premium Income ETF. This is an index fund made up of different stocks similarly to the uh, VOO here where you have a lot of different companies in here in different sectors the difference here is that this is run by fund managers that generate passive income by selling options on their positions with the covered call options trading strategy you can sell one contract for every 100 shares of stock that you own and you collect money from someone else in exchange for that so that has over time generated some very good passive income in form of dividends, about a 10% trailing yield. That's higher yield than you would get from a regular dividend stock or a savings account. So if you're into dividend stocks and passive income, not necessarily share price growth, you could go into JEPI. But over the past couple of years, since its inception, JetBee has gotten about 11% return on its shares. And JetBee's expense ratio is only 0.35%. Index fund number four is the Clean Energy ETF ICLN. This gives you good exposure into one of the fastest growing industries out there right now. Clean energy is obviously the future. If you look at the growth rates projected for the next 10 years, it's astronomical. Whether it's electric vehicles or simply solar energy, renewable energy, wind energy, all of these things are getting a lot of investment, 
a lot of government backing right now. For example, with the Inflation Reduction Act that was passed last year, that gives a lot of incentives for people to continue to buy into renewable energy and many of these stocks have benefited over the past couple of years. A lot of the stocks in this ETF are near 52 week highs and they have been growing like crazy. Stocks like Enphase, First Solar, Solar Edge, many of these stocks are growing their revenues by 50 to 80% here and their net income is up by hundreds of percent. This index fund has a good mix of sectors and utilities, technology, industrials, basic materials, and you also have diversification by region as well. So you have United States, Denmark, China, Spain, Brazil, so some great international exposure there that you don't get with some of the other index funds that I previously mentioned. ICLN's expense ratio is 0.4%, so so far the highest of these index funds. And number five, the last index fund here is KWEB, the Chinese tech ETF. I think that Chinese stocks are going to have a great 2023 for a number of reasons. You have China finally opening up, canceling their zero COVID policy. You also have regulation slowing down in China. You have some commitments from Chinese officials saying that they're going to focus on growth in the next couple of years. Many of these Chinese stocks traded at or near their all time lows. And I'm talking about 10 year lows. If you look at Alibaba, for example, and since then, since about October, November, they have stormed back like crazy. And I think they're in a new bull market. If you look at the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, you'll see that this was in a consistent downtrend for a couple of years now. China had really cracked down on these companies, fining them billions of dollars, but that looks like to be in the rear view mirror. We got encouraging news that Alibaba's ant group has also gotten approval for its new business plan things look to be on the up in general for Chinese tech stocks. And the whole exchange has been in a breakout. You see the breakout over the downtrend here. Some of the top 10 holdings here, which represent 60% of this index fund include Tencent, Baba, Meituan, JD, Pinduoduo, NetEase, so on and so forth. So a lot of representation in e-commerce, cloud, gaming, food delivery. There's also a lot of articles out there with data suggesting that a lot of hedge funds are piling into Chinese stocks right now. So could be good to ride the wave back up. Most of the stocks in this ETF are actually based in the Hong Kong Stock Exchange because there were a lot of fears of delisting. But over time, we've gotten more updates from the governments of both countries, US and China, saying that they are continuing to make progress on making sure that these stocks don't get delisted. So you can see I have my basket of index funds here, KWEB, JEPI, VOO, QQQ, and ICLN. I'm gonna equal weight it, so a pretty similar amount in each of these positions. Running the simulation since 2020, you can see that this at one point did outperform SPY very significantly, almost twice as much. But then over time, this has gone back down and right now it's running pretty similarly to SPY here. So at least in the past two years or so, this is pretty consistent with the market. And you can see that the maximum drawdown here for this portfolio is 32% versus SPY's 24.5%. So when you think about it, there is a bit more risk when it comes to investing in all these different index funds. And some of these, like we talked about with the Chinese stocks, they dropped very significantly over the past couple of years. I do think they have good upside. ICLN, on the other hand, is outperforming the market. So you are going to have some that are doing better than others. We're going to see how these perform in the future in 2023, right? Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future performance, of course. We'll see how it goes, but this is just an interesting little note here for you guys and i encourage you guys to test out composer test out your different strategies and portfolios it is really insightful to take a look at uh, the different returns that you get as well as the maximum drawdown the amount of risk that you could potentially take so those are the five index funds i'm buying in 2023 voo qqq jeppy icln and kweb as always do your own research make sure it fits into your investment portfolio please subscribe and like this video if you got a lot of value out of this one be sure to check out our discord for more trading and investing courses live trading alerts one-on-one -on -one mentorship and a whole lot more hope to see you in there and i'll see you in the next video